the worst match of every WrestleMania event. WrestleMania 1, King Kong Bundy vs SD Jones WrestleMania 1 was a truly historic event in WWE, yet it also featured one of the more underwhelming matches in WrestleMania history. The match in question saw King Kong Bundy squash Special Delivery Jones in a matter of seconds. Although the match made Bundy look credible, it wasn't a match that belonged on the WrestleMania match card. WrestleMania 2 Roddy Piper vs Mr. T Boxing Match WrestleMania 2 featured a match that was so overwhelmingly bad that Dave Meltzer awarded the match a minus 5 star rating. The match itself featured Roddy Piper and Mr. T in a boxing match, and the desire from the fans to see a boxing match on the grandest stage was non existent. The now infamous boxing match would end in round 4 as Piper would hit a body slam on Mr. T to cause a DQ. WrestleMania 3 Hillbilly Jim, Haiti Kid, and Lil Beaver vs King Kong Bundy, Lil Tokyo, and Lord Littlebrook. The King Kong Bundy went from main eventing WrestleMania 2 vs Hulk Hogan to wrestling in a lousy comedic six person tag match the following year. Bundy would team with Lil Tokyo and Lord Littlebrook to take on Hillbilly Jim, Haiti Kid, and Lil Beaver. The brief matchup mainly existed for comedic value, yet it was poorly executed and left fans wondering what on earth they had just seen. WrestleMania 4 Bam Bam Bigelow vs One Man Gang WrestleMania 4 featured a tournament to crown a new champion, and unfortunately, not every match on the card was a classic. Early in the show, Bam Bam Bigelow took on One Man Gang, and the match was without a doubt the worst match featured on the card. The match would feature a lack of action, and just two minutes into the contest, one man gang would pick up a count out victory. WrestleMania 5 The Bushwhackers vs The Fabulous Rougeos WrestleMania 5 featured a truly abysmal tag match featuring The Bushwhackers and The Fabulous Rougeos. The match was filled with weird comedy, a lack of selling, and a crowd that had zero interest in seeing the four men compete. WrestleMania 6 The Hart Foundation vs The Bolsheviks Calling a match featuring Bret Hart the worst match of any card though seems drastic, yet unfortunately at WrestleMania 6, the Hart Foundation was just given 19 seconds on the card. The Hart Foundation would squash the Bolsheviks, and whilst a quick win did receive a reaction, a ton more time could have been offered to two talented teams. WrestleMania 7 Jake Roberts vs Rick Martel Blindfold Match A credit should be offered to WWE for delivering something unique with the blindfold match at WrestleMania 7. Jake Roberts and Rick Martel were two incredible talents, yet the illusion was completely shattered when just a few seconds in, it was apparent that both men could clearly see out of their so-called blindfolds. WrestleMania 8 Big Boss Man, Virgil, Sergeant Slaughter and Jim Duggan take on the Mountie, the Nasty Boys and Repo Man. It's common practice for WWE to throw endless talents on the WrestleMania card, and this was the case at WrestleMania 8 when WWE booked a random 8-man tag on the show. Although the tag featured top names such as The Big Boss Man and Sergeant Slaughter, the match served no purpose other than to get wrestlers on the card. WrestleMania 9 The Undertaker vs Giant Gonzalez The Undertaker has had countless classics at WrestleMania, however, his WrestleMania 9 match with Giant Gonzalez was the worst match on the respective card. The match was atrocious, and despite The Undertaker trying his best, there was nothing the dead man could do even to get a passable match out of the virtually immobile Gonzalez. WrestleMania 10 Earthquake vs Adam Bomb Earthquake and Adam Bomb's 35 second match at WrestleMania 10 failed to deliver anything of significance. And whilst Earthquake getting a win at WrestleMania was nice, the match could have easily been booked on Raw. WrestleMania 11 The Undertaker vs King Kong Bundy Seeing The Undertaker defeat a former WrestleMania main eventer in King Kong Bundy at WrestleMania 11 was great to see. Yet there was a distinct lack of chemistry that resulted in the two having the worst match on the show. Quality aside, the match did feature the dead man performing a body slam to Bundy, which resulted in an impressive visual. WrestleMania 12 The Ultimate Warrior vs Hunter Hearst Helmsley Before Triple H became the game, he was booked in a squash match at WrestleMania 12 against The Ultimate Warrior. It's well documented just how much of a failure Warriors 1996 run was, and this was the first indicator that the run was doomed to fail. The match featured Warrior selling nothing that the future Triple H was delivering, and this included Warrior no selling, a pedigree. WrestleMania 13 The Headbangers vs Doug Furness and Phil LaFont vs The Godwins vs The New Blackjacks WrestleMania 13 is mostly known for Stone Cold vs Bret Hart, yet it also featured a number of dull encounters including a fatal 4-way elimination match to determine new number 1 contenders contenders for the tag titles. The match was barely passable for Raw, and there was no need for the matchup to take up 10 whole minutes on the WrestleMania match card. WrestleMania 14 Tag Team Battle Royal 
the first official WrestleMania event of the Attitude Era kicked off with a tag team battle royal, and the only reason the match occurred was so it could spotlight the return of the Legion of Doom to WWE. Due to so many names being in the battle royal, it was impossible to see anything, so that's ultimately why it's the worst match on the show. WrestleMania 15 Sable vs Tori WrestleMania 15 featured Sable defending a women's title against Tori, and the match was horrible in every aspect. Sable refused to take any bumps and Tori wasn't ready for a pay-per-view match, especially at WrestleMania. WrestleMania 16 – Terry vs The Cat WrestleMania 16 featured just one singles match and it saw Terry Runnels take on The Cat in a cat fight. Matches of this nature were becoming insanely outdated by the time WrestleMania 16 arrived and it was evident based on the fan response that they were ready to see names such as Lita and Trish Stratus take center stage. WrestleMania 17 – Gimmick Battle Royal Although WrestleMania 17 is considered by many to be the greatest WrestleMania ever, there was one match that wasn't received too fondly. The gimmick Battle Royal was a fun way of paying tribute to the past, yet most of the wrestlers were incredibly out of shape and immobile, and fans came away from watching the match concerned about the wrestlers well-being as opposed to being entertained by the action. WrestleMania 18 – Maven vs Goldust By WrestleMania 18, WWE were in the process of fizzling out the hardcore division, and the matchup between Maven and Goldust for the hardcore title was a sign that the title had passed its sell-by date. The match offered nothing new or exciting, and subsequent 24-7 hardcore title matches during the pay-per-view itself failed to generate any interest in the division. WrestleMania 19 – Pillow Fight In terms of acclaimed WrestleMania events, WrestleMania 19 is up there with the very best. Yet the worst match on the show is likely a match that WWE will never mention again. The match in question is a fatal four-way pillow fight between Stacey Keebler, Tori Wilson, Anya Ballinger, and Katana Baker. The match went to a no contest when all four women teamed up and pulled down the pants of Jonathan Coachman. WrestleMania 20 – Goldberg vs Brock Lesnar When it was leaked online that both Goldberg and Brock Lesnar were leaving WWE following WrestleMania 20, the MSG fans decided to boot both men out of the building during their highly anticipated match. The match was slow, boring, and the fans were more interested in the hijinks of special guest referee Stone Cold Steve Austin. WrestleMania 21 – Aki Bono vs The Big Show WWE's bold idea to book a sumo match for WrestleMania 22 was an odd move, as there was no interest in seeing such a matchup, and WWE believed that the match would break a wider interest to WrestleMania. The sumo match was between Aki Bono and Big Show, and it would last just one minute before Big Show was defeated. WrestleMania 22 – The Boogeyman vs Booker T Booker T did his best at WrestleMania 22 to get a passable match out of the Boogeyman, yet ultimately he just couldn't work his magic. The match was awkward, flat, and the crowd didn't seem to care about anything that was happening. Booker deserved better, especially on the grandest stage of them all. WrestleMania 23 – Kane vs The Great Khali Kane vs Khali was never going to be a classic at WrestleMania 23, yet the match was even worse than fans could ever expect. The match featured below average action and a Khali win that nobody wanted to see. WrestleMania 24 – Kane vs Chavo Guerrero The ECW title was defended for the first time ever at WrestleMania 24 when Chavo Guerrero defended against Kane. The match was a showcase of what exactly WWE thought of the ECW brand as Kane squashed Guerrero in seconds to win the title. The match was a low point in an otherwise stellar WrestleMania. WrestleMania 25 – Miss WrestleMania Battle Royal On paper, the idea of delivering a Miss WrestleMania Battle Royal is an excellent idea. It allows WWE to showcase the female talent of the past and present, however, WWE delivered the match in such a backwards way at WrestleMania 25. The match was a complete mess and numerous appearances weren't even acknowledged. The match was eventually won by Santino Marella in drag, which was a massive spit in the face to the women involved. WrestleMania 26 – Bret Hart vs Vince McMahon Bret Hart vs Vince McMahon was an overbooked mess that overstayed its welcome. Hart was limited in the ring due to health issues as well as an insurance policy and WWE had no justification in allotting the match 11 minutes. WrestleMania 27 – Michael Cole vs Jerry Lawler there's a ton of debate surrounding what is the worst WWE match ever, yet it's an agreed opinion that Michael Cole vs Jerry Lawler at WrestleMania 27 is one of the worst matches of all time. The match was a burden to watch as WWE devoted far too much time to a dire match, whilst names such as Sheamus and Daniel Bryan were dumped on the pre-show. Even Vince McMahon hated the match so much that he labelled it the worst thing he's ever seen. Yeah, it was really that bad. WrestleMania 28 
Daniel Bryan vs Sheamus. Speaking of Daniel Bryan and Sheamus, the two would embark on a rematch the following year for the world title, and to the dismay of the fans, the match ended in 18 seconds. While the squash match was heavily panned at the time, luckily it resulted in the official beginning of the Yes Movement. WrestleMania 29, Ryback vs Mark Henry Whilst not the greatest WrestleMania in the world, the in-ring action at WrestleMania 29 was passable, yet the worst match on the card was undoubtedly Ryback vs Mark Henry. The match was a by-the-numbers TV-style match, and in a bizarre move, Henry got the win despite Ryback being set for a main event level push. WrestleMania 30, Vicky Guerrero Invitational WrestleMania 30 remains beloved by the fans, and to pinpoint the worst match on the card is a tough task. Upon reflection, the match in question is probably the Vicky Guerrero Invitational, as the match followed Brock Lesnar ending the streak, meaning the fans could care less about any of the women in the match. WrestleMania 31, AJ Lee and Paige vs The Bella Twins Similarly to WrestleMania 30, WrestleMania 31 was well received by fans, so picking the worst match on the respective show is once again not the easiest thing in the world. The worst match allocated likely goes to AJ Lee and Paige vs The Bella Twins. WrestleMania 32, The League of Nations vs as the New Day. Many would cite The Rock vs Rowan as the worst match on the WrestleMania 32 card, yet the match was more of a segment than a featured match. Outside of The Rock vs Rowan showdown, the worst match on the show is likely the League of Nations vs the New Day match, as the WWE were insistent on getting the infamous League of Nations stable over. WrestleMania 33, Bray Wyatt vs Randy Orton Wyatt vs Randy Orton's WWE title showdown had a compelling build, yet the match itself was a bizarre, nonsensical match that resulted in an Orton title win. Wyatt had only won the title at the prior pay-per-view, and to see him drop the title on the grandest stage completely deflated the crowd. WrestleMania 34, The Undertaker vs John Cena Fans collectively expected a classic when it came to Taker vs Cena at WrestleMania 34, yet Vince McMahon believed the right booking move was to book the dead man to outright squash Cena. This wasn't what the fans wanted, and this opinion was shared by The Undertaker himself, who also wanted a full-length matchup. WrestleMania 35, Samoa Joe vs Rey Mysterio Despite WrestleMania 35 being one of the longest Mania events of all time, this didn't stop WWE from giving Samoa Joe and Rey Mysterio a total of 58 seconds. Fans expected a great match between the two, and they were left feeling underwhelmed by the little to no action. WrestleMania 36, Elias vs King Corbin Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, WrestleMania 36 took place at the WWE Performance Center. This meant that WWE delivered a number of TV-style matches on the show. One of these was Elias vs King Corbin, which had been forgotten about by the masses and for good reason. WrestleMania 37, The Fiend vs Randy Orton WrestleMania 37 featured several duds on the show, and Night 2 kicked off with another lackluster Fiend vs Randy Orton match. Although the match was just 5 minutes in length, it was completely overbooked, and The Fiend's new burnt persona was stop following an RKO. WrestleMania 38, Pat McAfee vs Vince McMahon a Vince McMahon vs Pat McAfee was an impromptu match on WrestleMania 38's card on night 2, and there was no reason why the match needed to happen at all. Shockingly, McMahon got the win when he kicked a football at McAfee. And WrestleMania 39, Snoop Dogg vs The Miz When Shane McMahon tore his quad at WrestleMania 39, WWE were forced to improvise, and WrestleMania host Snoop Dogg will replace McMahon in the match. Snoop Dogg wasn't a trained wrestler by any means, so he was forgiven for his terrible offense, which included the worst looking people's elbow imaginable. But there you have it folks, the worst match of every WrestleMania event. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.